Like, it's not that I don't try to keep my shop clean. It's just that I have nowhere to put all this stuff. I tried hanging tools on the wall once, right back here, but I just didn't like it. I think for a small shop, it's important that it feels open and spacious. If there's tools hanging on the wall, that tends to make it feel crowded. So a while ago I made these drawers, which worked out really well. They open and close smoothly, and they cost almost nothing, and they were super easy to make. So I thought, why not expand on that and make a whole bunch more of these for my tools? So that's what I did. There's 45 drawers here, and I think they took me a total of probably about 25 hours to make. And they cost me about $300, which is a whole lot cheaper than something like the rolling tool cabinets that you can get from home centers. Those are about $500 for 15 drawers, and here I have 45 drawers for $300, so this is a lot better deal. And honestly, I think they're almost as good as drawers. They run really nice and smooth, and no binding. The biggest problem is they aren't full extension, so you can't really utilize the entire space available. But I actually sort of solved this problem. I put a false back in the drawer, so that way you don't accidentally pull it out too far, because it's kind of like a mental drawer stop. That is the back of the usable drawer space. So I don't need a stop. I can pull them out all the way if I want to, but I normally don't do that accidentally. However, I can also use that space in the back for storage, for maybe stuff that's relevant to what's in the drawer, but doesn't need to be accessed frequently. So the way the drawers are designed, the bottom actually acts as the drawer slide. It extends past the side, so the side is just glued directly onto the bottom, which is plenty strong. Also, with the drawer slide being at the very bottom, that means I can use my rearrangeable drawer system that I've showed in previous videos. You can see there's a lot of slots cut here, and the drawers are built on inch and a half increments. I can swap them around however I want to. I could even put a big six inch drawer up here. They're also rearrangeable from column to column. Different banks of drawers are also interchangeable. Having that flexibility is really handy. I don't need to decide where things go right to start with. Just build it and then I can arrange them as I figure out where I want things. With this many drawers, it's pretty easy to get confused as to what's in what drawer. And so that's why the poles are colored. That way I can tell at a glance from all the way across the shop which drawer I'm going for. Because if I'm going for a hand plane, well I know that's in a drawer with a green pole. So there's my hand planes. I haven't nearly got all the drawers full yet, but it's already made a lot of difference in my shop. It's keeping the horizontal surfaces clean. Isn't that something everybody wants? Now with this big cabinet, I had the opportunity to make a nice work surface. For the past two years, I've been putting up with this, which is a half inch plywood torsion box. It's extremely lightweight, and although it's good for outfeed and assembly, it's not a good workbench at all because it slides around and bounces and it's not good. So now I had the opportunity to fix that once and for all. So I could have gone with a Rubo style laminated hardwood top, but I just can't afford that much hardwood. Hardwood is expensive. I could have gone with softwood, but softwood just isn't heavy enough. Hmm, I need something cheap and heavy. So yeah, this workbench has a concrete top. 
Now, of course, it has to be covered in wood because concrete's abrasive. That's not a good work surface. So what's so wonderful about having this massive concrete chunk for a top? Well, it's just an incredible work surface. Let me give you a demo. Right here, I have some sawdust and wood chips and a block of wood. My iPhone is recording a slow-mo right there. And three feet away, I'm going to hit the table with a mallet. And let's see how much those bounce. That was pretty incredible. Well, you know the drill. We try the same test here. And let's see how that looks. The difference is really impressive. And that's going to make a lot of difference when you're working on the workbench with other things lying around. They're not going to be bouncing around and making a lot of noise. But this isn't just an advantage for impact. It also has a big influence on things like sanding. I'm not exactly sure why, but for some reason, sanding on this assembly table makes parts walk across the table. And on here, they just don't budge. Before I made the big workbench, I made this little workbench as a prototype. And you see I put threaded inserts in this top. These are handy for holding down work pieces, but I found them to be more harm than good. They make things uneven, and they're also a spot to drop small parts. So I like this nice, smooth, even top. But if I ever decide I want to add inserts, it's very easy to add them later. Just a matter of drilling holes and epoxying them in. I'll most likely end up adding them. Well, I think that's it for this one. I'll have a build video coming out in a few days, so make sure you subscribe so you don't miss that. Mm -hmm.